Hey guys, right here, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a little bit different video. Usually I do videos on DIY power systems for emergencies in case the power goes out. But today we are doing a 1600 mile one way road trip, 3200 miles total down into Mexico. So if you wanna have some fun, come along. So for this trip, we are going to be testing out my RV power system, my 48 volt battery here. We've got a lot of wires, so I'm not going to show all those wires up top. But I've got 10, two server rack batteries here, hooked in with two water heater earthquake straps. This is 200 pounds of batteries, about the equivalent of 16 car batteries. But for this trip, we are going to be testing out the power system we have here. See how it does. We're going to be, we're going to try and go off grid the entire time. I don't have a generator in this rig. There are plugs for emergency power if I need them, but I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to use them at all. And I have a meter connected to my battery. Everything's reset and I can track how much power we're going to be using throughout the entire trip. I believe I'm going to be running my air conditioning for maybe five hours during the day. I think it's going to be really sunny down there, which is going to help a lot. I've got almost 1600 watts of solar on the roof. I've got videos on installing this system if you're interested. But in the RV, I'm gonna be running the air conditioner, microwave, my electric hot water heater, my electric uh, fridge. Hope my electric hot water heater is gonna be working. If not, we're gonna to have to use propane. But it is a good below freezing temperatures this morning. I'm excited to go to the beach. But before we get off on this trip, we're leaving this morning. Uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And that is safety. Probably why I feel more comfortable doing this trip is because I've done it a lot during my life. I grew up during doing this trip. It's a good family tradition. I'm going to be driving down with my cousin in Price and another cousin that just lives a couple miles over here. In total, there's going to be about 20 rigs that are driving down. But uh, this is what we're doing. So uh, keep comments respectful. Hundreds of Canadian seniors that go down and do this trip. They live there probably in Mexico probably four to six months out of the year. But their other choice is to spend winters in Canada. Suficiente? Gracias. Hey guys, welcome to Mexico. We did make it down here. We did have some troubles, but we've been here. It's been a great trip. Uh, it's been like 13 days. It's Friday. We arrived Friday two weeks earlier. 
And uh, so before I do a summary of how the solar system did, I'll just show you a little bit around the place. Come along. So it is parked just behind those that row of trucks. But I'll just show you the beach here. It's pretty close. Um, yeah, I did have some things that went wrong, some things that went well. I'll go through things I would change. So I'll go through that in just a second. But if you want to come to Mexico in your RV or trailer, you can probably do it. There's a lot of trailer parks, depending on where you want to go. A lot of uh, mostly Canadians that come down and stay for six months at a time. We went and did some service at an orphanage and I found out they have a solar system that was disabled because of a typhoon that came through. So I came back, I did another video on fixing, like getting that solar system fixed up and I'll post that on the link here on the top when it comes out. But here's the beach. This is great. Pretty good waves. Did some fishing this year. Fishing wasn't super great, but uh, you know, fishing was good. Catching wasn't super great. Yeah, but I would uh, highly recommend it. I think we're paying like $30 a night plus a little bit extra per child. We've got a lot of kids here running around, so they're all at the beach. So hopefully I can make this video without them running through camp. But here is our camp. It's like 11 o'clock during the day. Looks like they're running the air conditioner inside. We've got 985 watts coming in. 1.5 kilowatts to run the air conditioner and everything else right now. Battery's at 47%. So my, I've got almost 1600 watts of solar on the roof coming in through here. I've got this combiner box so I could add, you know, uh, more panels here another string of panels if i wanted to uh if needed for some ground arrays and then the solar just comes in here hooks in the bottom and then i've got the positive and negative battery terminal coming over here it's kind of messy sorry and then a communication cable that talks to the battery the batteries these batteries are each 48 volts they're in parallel and because i have this communication cable i can see on the screen what my battery percentage is. If I hold this button down and go to go to menu 5 and select lithium and then I um, then you can select the protocol which is L001 and that's the protocol for speaking with uh, these this uh, EG4 LL battery or the Life Power 4 battery. Either battery will work on those communication, uh, will work over that communication protocol. And to run my 12 volt appliances, I just have this 48 volt to 12 volt step down converter. 48 volts goes in one side and then 12 volts comes out. And I ripped out my 12 volt battery and this is acting as my 12 volt battery. It's supplying 12 volts to my entire system here. This is a solar charge controller, an inverter, and an AC charger. So I have AC coming out here, and this is where my shore power plug is. It's not plugged into shore power, it is plugged into the system. And I can also have some friends plug in if they want to plug in here too. Because I ran the wire around. So I have a bunch of different solar power ports. In RVs, there's, inside there's like a converter box, which I disabled because when I have 120 volts of power, I don't want to have that converter box power my 12 volt system because there's a lot of inefficiencies there. I want it to just come straight from my batteries here in my 48 volt to 12 volt step down converter. But anyways, that's the basic summary of the system. I'll put a link here if you want to see the full build. For this trip, I added that second battery because uh, we're going to be here for two over two weeks. We're leaving tomorrow morning, so let's go ahead and talk about what went well and what um, didn't go so well. 
All right, so let's talk about what went well. So the first thing that went well was we did have plenty of sun. We only had a couple days with clouds, but we never had to charge the battery with the grid power that's available here. We only use solar power for that. We started out with 14.6 kilowatt hours collected from the sun before we left. Let's see what we ended up with. Okay, there we go. Now we're at 477 kilowatt hours. So we started at 416 and we're at 400, not sure what that is per day we were collecting from the sun, but a lot of power from the sun. When I got down here, I turned on the solar charge controller to charge the batteries. I felt kind of guilty because I'm in someone else's country and I felt like I was stealing their power. <laughs> so to charge my batteries, so I'm gonna steal some of their power before I go home, I'm gonna take it back to the United States. So I don't know, that just felt kind of weird, stealing power from Mexico. But I don't think I'm breaking any laws there. But, so that's, that's that. So one thing that also went well was I didn't have, I was kind of worried that it was gonna get too hot here and the air conditioner wouldn't keep up, but we were able to keep cool. My wife didn't complain about not having enough air conditioning. So in the morning we would, go to the beach and then I just let it, I wouldn't run the air conditioner, I just let the battery fill up. And then about, you know, two, three o'clock when we'd come back, then it would be really hot in the, air, in the RV and I'd flip on the air conditioner for a few hours and that was nice. And that was able to keep us cool enough. And at night it would get kind of hot and I turned on the air conditioner a few times. My wife even told me to turn off the air conditioner because it was getting too cold a few times at night. So that was my biggest worry, not having enough sun to keep the RV cool. Now it's the winter here, but it's still like, it's probably 75 degrees right now. And, but it is get pretty humid. But if you come here in the summer, Mexico in the summer, or if you're in like Southern Texas, there's no way the solar panel is gonna keep up with the heat. You might be able to keep up with one day as it runs throughout the day and the sun's out, but the next day when, it, uh, when it's hot again, you'll eventually run out of power because you're using the air conditioner throughout the day and into the night. So you'll eventually run out of power when you're running the air conditioner at night. So if I really wanted to have a true off-grid system for a hotter client, climate, I'm definitely gonna need to put some ground solar array, some ground panels out. I was staying somewhere more permanent in order to keep up with the hot um, weather. And another thing, um, the solar that's out on my roof, it doesn't have enough power to charge my batteries all the way up. So that was kind of a little bit annoying. Okay, one thing that also went well was reserve mode on my grow watt. I really like that feature, I'll show you that. Just get into the menu here. So go to menu five, that's the battery. And here it's set to lithium and so the inverter will actually turn off at, I think it's 25%. I wish that you could configure that, but you, I don't think you can. But it will automatically turn off the inverter at 25%, so you're not stuck with a dead battery if you leave your air conditioner on by accident. But if, uh, say it goes down to 25 and you're out, you can go into reserve mode by switching the battery to user-defined mode. So putting it in reserve mode will let you drain the battery down to totally zero. So that leads me to the next section of the video, what went wrong. So one time I turned it to reserve mode on a Sunday afternoon and I fell asleep on the bunk bed here. So when the sun went down, uh, we needed power to warm something up in the microwave. And that is the only time I plugged into shore power, <laughs> but it did not charge the battery. I specifically, had it so it wasn't charging the battery. That's the only time we use shore power during this trip. So a lot of people have asked me on my other videos, what if I had shore power? How can I use shore power if I installed a system like this on my RV? So there's three ways you can use shore power with a system like this. The first way is you can unplug your shore power plug from the AC output of the grow watt, like I have, plug it straight into the shore power right there and then you have power to your RV. Uh, so the second way you could use shore power is you can plug the shore power into the AC input 
of the grow watt. There's a, you can wire a little plug up and provide power into your grow watt, and then that will charge the batteries, and it can also send power to your RV. And you can keep your shore power plug plugged in to the AC output of the grow watt, if that makes sense. Third way you can use shore power is you could buy a separate 48 volt charger and hook it onto those batteries and plug the charger into the shore power. If for some reason you don't want to use the AC charger on the grow watt, or if you want like redundancy, you can buy a separate AC charger and uh, that will work as well. So the other thing that went wrong was I didn't get as much power from the solar panels as I thought I would get. I think the main reason was that they are not tilted. If you tilt the panel towards the sun, you can get a lot more power. And the sun was a little, you can see my shadow, it's like 12 o'clock right now. The sun's not directly overhead. But even though I have almost 1600 watts up here, the highest I was able to read was just over 1000 watts. I just barely read it right now and I'm getting 1000 watts right now. But normally it's between 800 and 900 in sunny conditions. That means I wasn't able to run my electric fridge. I used all the power just for running the air conditioner, keeping things cool. But I did use the microwave, which has to run off electricity. The fridge was running on propane and the hot water heater was running on propane as well. Another thing that went wrong was I had more trees than I thought I was going to have down here. I thought it'd be a little more open. So if I parked right in here close to this wall near the sewer, which is super convenient, I would be shaded for a part of the day. I didn't want that. So I parked here, which gave me more access to the sun throughout the day. So we could make this video and do this test. And when our sewer filled up, we just had to hook a whole bunch of uh, sewer sewer cords over to the sewer to dump things. So another lesson learned is, I don't know if it's because of the humidity or the Anderson hitch, the way it disconnects from the ball when I lift the jacks off of the truck, but it seemed like 12 volt motor was having a hard time lifting the trailer off the truck hitch. So I had some people jump in the back of the truck while it was lifting itself off. I think I'm gonna get the bigger 48 volt to 12 volt step down converter. I've got 30 amp, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get the 40 amp. Sure. Hey guys! So there's a couple of things that could have gone wrong. Very, it could have gone wrong, especially if I was using the trailer for a real emergency off-grid situation for a longer period of time. Here's some things that definitely could have gone wrong. Uh, if I ran out of propane, and I eventually, if this was a longer stay in the emergency, my propane would eventually run out and I would want to preserve that as long as I could for emergencies. But if I ran out of propane, my propane stove would stop working. So it would be nice to have an electric cooktop for one. Also, if I ran out of propane, my water heater would have to use electricity to heat. It's got a dual, it can heat from electricity or propane. But I found out that my coil in my water heater here is broken, so I had to use propane. Also, one thing that could go wrong if I ran out of propane in an emergency situation is I'm not sure my solar system could keep up with keeping my food cold. So these, this is a dual purpose Dometic fridge. It's nice because it can use uh, propane or electricity to run. But when it uses electricity, if you're out of propane, use a ton of electricity to run. This thing idles at 310 watts and it, and I've never seen it turn off. It just runs constantly 310 watts. 
Now to put that in perspective, my fridge at home, my really large fridge uses 75 watts on average. Sometimes the compressor will kick on, it'll go over that, but on average it's using 75 watts an hour to run that fridge. So this fridge is like running three or four home large electric fridges. Not as good. I know some of the new RVs now have uh, just the electric option where it's really efficient electric, uses like 50 watts. I would love one of those. So if I had just an electric fridge that uses 50 watts, my 10 kilowatt hour battery bank could run it for 200 hours or eight days without any sun at all. So I would love one of those really efficient electric fridges. Another thing that would be nice to have is a large 12 volt electric cooler. They use 13 watts on average. From my understanding, no matter what size they are, the large ones or the small ones. So that my battery could run that for 769 hours or 32 days without any sun. So that would definitely keep my food cold. So one thing we did use here in this RV that was sort of what was, was on grid, I guess, is the uh, water. So we filled up our water tanks with a hose using the water pressure from over there. But I need to get a separate pump. If we were in the mountains somewhere, I'd have no way to fill up my water tank. So I need to get like a separate pump with a hose. It'll connect to a hose I could run down to like a river, turn it on and pump the water up into my tank here. That'd be really nice for emergencies. And you obviously can't drink water in Mexico. So we've been what, buying bottled water from the local gas station here and drinking it from the cooler. So in an emergency situation, I wonder if I could use one of those backpacking water filters to filter out like dirty um, water from Mexico. I know people in Mexico don't use that in order to get their water, they buy it. So I'm not sure why that is, but if you know more about filtering water, let me know if you think that would work or not. Those backpacking water filters can hook onto like a tub of, hook onto like a five gallon water bucket and you can just gravity feed it large amounts of water, of drinking water through that bucket. So by far the number one thing that went wrong with, with this trip is I must have hit a bump, a big bump or something, but my fifth wheel towing hitch where it connects to the frame of my trailer started cracking. And instead of sitting flat like this to connect to the truck, it, was, it started tilting up a little bit and there were some cracks in the frame. So I've got a welder here that's gonna uh, fix things up so we can get home. If you're watching this, I did make it home, so fingers crossed. But thanks a lot guys for watching. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. We'll see you guys next time. See ya.